So, hi, <laughs> we're going to have fun today. <clears throat> and it it's such a pleasure for me to share my my art self with you. Um, some people were really surprised that I did art because I guess that doesn't come into my um, into my work life um, that much. But um, I have done art since oh since forever. And uh, it's a big part of, of, of my life. It's a big part of my, um, my sense of well-being and sense of participation in the universe. So it's particularly wonderful for me to, to share that with you today. Wow. Okay. Um, so the, the name of this reflection is uh, art making as a dialogue with the larger systems, right? But then we have to ask, what do we mean by art making? And what do we mean by larger systems? And both of those things are very hard to define, right? Very hard to, to talk about because they're not in the realm of the ordinary, the linear, the logical, um, both that sense that we know as uh, in focusing of being able to dip into this larger, more personal and more universal at the same time. Always surprising experiences of ourselves that we we call the implicit, um, and art is a is a way of doing that. All kinds of art, you know, uh, dance, writing, uh, visual art. But today we're going to talk about the we're going to talk about the art of a visual language um, <clears throat> to give you a story about what what I mean by art. Um, I love making art in the in the country. And my partner's cousin came to visit and there was art all over the place on the porch and everywhere. And um and and he said, well I don't get this. What is it? What what is this? You know, asking is it a you know what what does it represent? And I said, well, it's feelings. And um, just walk around and look at all of the art that you see and see what feelings come. And he said, well, I, I don't feel anything. It's just, you know, just colors. And I said, well, just give it a try. And then we were deep in a conversation and I hear this voice from the porch saying, I got it, I got it, I got it. I looked at this piece and, and I felt it right here. And he was so excited. And uh, I was so excited. He said, it's, it's, it's in my guts, this picture. And I thought that was a wonderful example of what art is. It's something that makes you feel something, um, and it and it makes you penetrate a different um, dimension of experience, right? And we we know this from focusing, um, but. But it's hard to put into words. It, it isn't just abstract art that does that. Uh, as we know, we've we uh, we've looked at together. Uh, Frida has shown us. Well, I, I guess that was abstract art too. But but uh, certainly, um, all of the the arts bring us to that place. But 
all of the, the arts don't do that for everybody. People will say that's not art because it doesn't do it to them. And it's very, very unique. So I'm gonna show you today some of the images that that I painted and, and just uh, see what does something and what doesn't. And then if it doesn't do something, that just doesn't, it's not a vehicle for you. Um, <clears throat> I have a memory of being a, a little kid in Brooklyn. And I think I had mentioned to you that I grew up as a very lonely child. Um, there were no other kids in my neighborhood to play with. And uh, the, the highlight of my experience was to be given a, a new box of crayons. And some of you, some of you older people will remember the magic of Crayola crayons, 48 colors. And it was, it was just so delicious. But I didn't know what to do with it because I couldn't draw things and I didn't know what else to do. I didn't know what to do with the crayons. And I remember copying um, this little boy in my, my class had done a, a flag and a rock and that was very easy to draw. And I remember drawing flags and rocks over and over again. Be, because that was the only thing that I could draw. And as an adult, I um, I wish that that child had been freed from feeling like it had to be drawing something in particular. My mind just didn't work that way. And so I, I, um, I make up for it, I, <laughs> I carry it forward by giving my inner child lots of opportunities to play with, with color and, um, and form and formlessness and atmosphere that we can make and loads of art supplies to, to do that with. Um, so last night I had an open studio and uh, invited people, um, some of you who live in New York to come and uh, look at the art and make some art together. And, and you'll see a little video of the art making a little bit later on. Um, when, I, when I grew up and, um, and I still had this deep desire to make, to, to make art, to play, um, I remember one, uh, experience, I was working with watercolors and this new boyfriend came by who uh, was a, a Bulgarian sculptor that I had met at the Museum of Modern Art. And he came and looked at what I was doing and he said, oh no, you have to be more courageous. And he put his hand in the um, palette and he plopped it on the paper and smeared it and he said this is art <laughs> and i was so taken aback i was doing everything very carefully and and i was very charmed by that and i said this yes to be more courageous and and i think i've spent you know 50 years <laughs> trying to learn to be more courageous in many ways but but in that way as well uh, and I, I went to the Feminist Art Institute, which was uh, a wonderful group in New York that exposed us to all kinds of uh, art experiences. And that helped me to be more courageous. Um, so I, I, I don't want to take too much of our time here, but um, I want us to be able to have a dialogue about art, about uh, what it is to have a dialogue with the universe. We think of focusing as having a dialogue with our inner selves. 
but our inner selves are not contained within our skin, right? Our inner selves go way out into the universe. So we're having a dialogue with our very, very particular unique selves in that moment, but also with our universal large um, expansive selves that go way, right out um, to the universe. So let's just take a breath. And maybe I announced before a couple of you came that I'd love you to get some markers or crayons or pen or whatever it is and paper to have by your computer. And we're going to have an experience of, of making art together. In the, um, in the vein of being more courageous, um, a colleague of, of mine who is an outrageous uh, artist said, the wonderful thing about being a maker is that you never become timidified. And she was wonderful at making up words, timidified. So let's just have some brief, couple of brief comments about art and dialogue with the universe. And then I, <clears throat> I'm going to show you some of my images uh, from the opening last night and give you an opportunity to engage in a focusing way with them. I, Megs Gladwell, I just... I so identify with the flags and the, what else? Uh, stones? Rock, <laughs> yes, a rock and a flag. <laughs> yeah, I remember um, choosing things to copy. Mm -hmm. um, and it gave me a comfort. It, it gave me a, one of my favorite words is vector. And it's funny, one of the things about doing art, doodling, writing, blah, blah. And focusing is you glump around the universe, and especially with you awesome. pick up your purple and you the vector you are, you are a vector, <laughs> are a vector, yes, yes, yes. Did, would you say of uh, what the word vector means to you, especially for the people who, um, English isn't their first language? Oh, thank you for saying that. Oh, I, th I think we, I think we, we lost, we lost connection there. That was kind of a, a, a vector that came across though, wasn't it? <laughs> <laughs> yes. That's it's more right. of a, a sound vector. Right. And what does the word vector mean to you? Oh, it ha feels like it's um, a direction. Hmm. It's it's a it's a movement um, that is felt sense. Yes, a felt sense movement. That's yep. lovely. Yeah, I know. In in computer graphics, uh, the vector I know best. Think of a a ray, a light ray, doodling a line or drawing lines across your computer screen. Very mm -hmm. narrow, intense band of light. Or energy. Mm -hmm. Mostly I know light vectors. Ah, uh, wonderful. But wonderful. it's very directional mm -hmm. and very condensed, intense, di directional, and absolute surety. <laughs> wonderful. Wonderful. Okay, I think I'm going to go right into showing you some images. And I'd like to invite you to... Um, Come into your body and 
feel the chair and ah, relax your muscles, all of those things that we do with our attunements and be in the mode of just seeing what happens. There's no expectations here. It's not about liking or disliking or um, making something of, just taking in these images and seeing what they do inside. It's allowing the visual language that we're sharing to create an atmosphere, to enter into the sphere of each painting so that it is your environment and see what that environment feels like to you the colors that attract you and bring you alive, the ones that make you nervous, the images that challenge you, the images that don't do anything, the ones that relax you. And maybe with your paper and pen, um, you might write a word or a thought very briefly um, when one comes to you with some of these images. I had some trouble picking which ones to, to show you, so I think I have a little bit too much, but we'll see how we go with that. This is the title picture of this, um, of this opening. And it was one where I was really practicing being bold and free. Just see what it might bring to you. Christine had said that this painting looks to her like a very simple person did it and I love that but it might look completely different to you we're ready for number three this is number four Just enter into that if that seems right to you. See what it feels like to be in it. Five. Seven. Eight. Nine. Thank 
I'm curious if you have a name for this one. Let's go back to that last point again. If, the, if there's a name that comes to you for this one, just write that down. Or any of them. Okay, we're ready. Okay. Oh, uh, this one is what we made as a group last night. I think we'll we'll wait for the little video. Let's just take a couple of breaths. To see what is there after looking at these images, sort of the whole experience of it. Just ask yourself, what, what did that do? What did that do in me? And of course, always in focusing whatever comes to you is welcome. Okay, let's let's have a, a few minutes to to talk about the experience. Yeah, anybody. Hi, Lynn. Hi, everybody. Thank you, Lynn, for sharing your images. Uh, it's great for me to be with them. I think what it did to me is that it broke the pattern. <laughs> broke the pattern. Uh -huh. Like breaking the, what's the word in English when something is the, you know, it's a computer word. That something is An algorithm. Yeah, the the yeah. So it broke the pattern. Something about the light breaking through, uh, light coming through is, and broke the pattern. Mm -hmm. mm. Uh huh. How did it feel to break the pattern? Actually, good. Uh-huh. Good, even though very um yet un um unorganized. Uh -huh. <laughs> or, mm, you know, not yet harmonized or organized or making a whore, but it feels it feels good. Uh-huh. That's very and and focusing does that, right? Uh, mm. in general, sort of breaks the predictable. Mm. Uh, and it feels disorganized, like, where is everything? I'm used to my logical um, world, but, but something feels good about it. Mm -hmm. Thank you for that question. What was the question you asked? What does it do for you? Something like that? Is that the question? do in you yeah say it again then what does it do in you ah what does it do in you thank you for that question lovely so the words that came up for me lynn i mean i love the art the words that came up were movement flow depth of color 
interbeing, you know, uh -huh. those are the words that came up. Uh -huh. It was wonderful. Mm. Thank you, Jim. Interbeing, that's, that's interesting. Huh. I felt like, uh, Lynn, I was in a storm. Uh, uh -huh. <laughs> I was, you know, when you said to enter it and, and, and the landscapes just kept changing and I'm really in awe of your art. I, I, I mean, you went from being Lynn Preston, the therapist per, to educator <laughs> person I know here on the screen to being like a, wow, you are quite an artist. Uh, uh, thank you, know, you. Like there's a whole nother you going on here. Yes, yes, there's a whole other me. And all of us have a whole other us, right? We all have that artist selves that um, that we want to be able to share with each other. I, I remember after I had uh, done this um, this uh, course in uh, the Feminist Art Institute, doing a workshop uh called um, Art as as a Right, Not a Privilege. And uh, <laughs> it was such fun to do that. That was 50 years ago, and I still remember it. But, but uh, art is not uh, the privilege of what we call talent. It's something that is inherent to all of us that we need to free up. Um, yes, yeah, so thank you. Anybody else? Yeah, hi, Lynn. Um, I love your artwork. It's You really are pretty amazing. Um, what brought to my mind was a lot of about nature. Um, yeah. That's what I felt. I felt, uh, you know, the ocean, autumn, uh, war at one point. One of uh, your one of your paintings, um, mm. one that has view and a lot of red in it, uh, felt like war to me. Yes, yes. Uh, but but I I really love the the um, the nature piece of it, the ocean, the leaves, all of that came to me. Autumn and your last one that you did as a group reminded me of the holidays. Ah, <laughs> uh -huh, yes, yes. Very playful, energetic. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Isn't that funny, Dave? Um, Lenore, you just—I realized writing down words. Mm -hmm. What yeah. the brown, the brown in the painting evoked Heather. Heather just popped right out of my head. Mm. But they nature and, mm. and Niagara with the with the big yellow. And yes, I love them. I really, really like them. Except the last one, <laughs> I liked it, but it made me laugh. The one you said <laughs> we did, it just, it looked like a thousand quilts or potholders, uh, a, a riot. It made me laugh. <laughs> How big was that, by the way? You said we made this. How big was the Yes, we? let's the see. It was, we? Um, two uh, 18 by 24s taped together so that it's twice 18 by 24 but I'm not as good at, at math as I am <laughs> what what uh 20 I guess it would be 48 by 18 but let's look at that little video now uh Christine of all of us making it together <laughs> there's Dorothy <laughs> Something else. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. Okay. So you you have a little image of us making it together. Um, actually, I love doing uh, art as a community, and it's a wonderful community building experience. And uh, for me, it, it represents very much what life is. Um, the way that I do it, and there are 
infinite ways of doing it is to have everybody make a mark uh, with their whole body and choose an instrument that they want to work with uh, pastel or or markers or crayons and then everybody does some kind of uh, of uh, template um, and chooses a place to to put their stencils and then everybody does uh, to decides on a background color and paints the the whole thing together we didn't have time but but uh when when there's more time we do other steps but people get into really expressing and layering so you're doing something on top of somebody else's which is uh scary and it's scary when somebody's doing something on top of yours, but it all comes together the way life does um, and the way a group does with these uh, expressions of the individual that, that make an organismic whole. So let's look at that image of what it makes, uh, the, the image of the final piece again, Christine, just to look at that as a piece that this is both the individual and the group. Mm. There's a, a cohesiveness and a, um, there's a spirit of that, of that group. And another group would do a completely different piece of art. The, the comments that you've made so far as it makes you laugh it uh it's very it's very bold okay so now i want to give you a chance uh we can take that away christine i want to give you a chance uh to do your individual art and um and if you want to take a picture of it and and send it to me and and i'll see what what it makes all together <laughs> that would be very interesting okay you have your pen or or pencil or crayons and your paper take a couple of breaths and then without thinking about it, make a gesture. And a gesture is like a, a, a line or scribble or writing or anything that comes to you, but without picking up the, the crayon. Uh, so it could be a big gesture or just a line. And, and put your whole body in it. It might be better to stand up and just make your mark in this world. And when you've made your mark, just look at it. Take it in. Oh, And the way you look at it is very, very important. It's not looking at it, evaluating it. Is it good or not good? The way you look at it is the focusing attitude of being interested in it. it you gave birth to this mark. And it has a life of its own like giving birth to a child, you don't get to say mm -hmm. how it is. It might not be what you intended, but it has a life. And, and look at it 
with the eyes of interest and almost sacredness. You know that this came, this mark. Maybe on a separate piece of paper, or even that one, write a word about who it is, like a newborn baby. Who is this? And then almost to take it the mark to your ear listen what does it need what does it say to you where does it want to go and then when you're really hearing it make another mark And it may not be what you heard. It may, it comes from you. It's a dialogue. When you're ready again, look carefully, turn it different directions. And ask inside, what did that do, that mark? See which side, you know, which way is up? Or are there many ways that could be up? Four ways that could be up. And again, make another mark. Now, when I say mark, you could color in something, you could write a word or a scribble, anything that comes to you, just let yourself go. See if you could express the mood, the atmosphere, the felt sense that's in you. And let it be whatever it is. Maybe it's frustration. You want to just scribble. Maybe you want to cross it out. Maybe you want to enhance some of the lines. Maybe you are feeling like lines aren't right for you and then do something other than lines. Try making a big shape. But you're responding to it rather than to my voice. I'm just encouraging you to respond to it to let it be what it wants to be. And I'm gonna give you two whole minutes if Christine could keep time to just do what feels right. Two minutes to play, to let your child express whatever is there. <laughs> that seemed like a very long time to me.
They got an extra 30 seconds. Okay. Oh. <laughs> Oh, welcome back. Uh, if you have your camera turned off, I'd love to see you. So maybe you could turn your camera back on. And uh, what what was that like? As you as you look at the piece now, is there a name for it? Well, for me, what's really the crux of what you're doing here? Yes. To, to look at it, uh, but not go into evaluating. Right, right. Aim with interest and curiosity. Yes. And, uh, right. and the only thing, I think maybe it's the wording, I think also the judgments come from inside. Yes. But then there's still, I think what we are practicing is a choice not to let that take over yes exactly and not let that be the first thing and not let that be the thing while we are creating yes and let our interest and curiosity lead what we're doing and be curious what comes other than judgments yes 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 very yes exactly yeah i i uh remember when i first went to the feminist art institute and one of the one of the teachers said to me with with sort of great compassion and pity you you have to uh you have to watch it or someday your painting will hang in a gallery and and people will walk by and say oh that's nice and i thought that i'd love it if my painting hung in a gallery what would be so terrible about that <laughs> from her point of view to say something oh that's very nice and walk by would be like hell for her and that was very inspiring to me it doesn't have to be if you make something ugly ugly is a statement uh, and it can be very freeing to try to make something ugly to really express ugliness and see what what that is. Well, the, the way I hear that is, if it's if it's just nice, it's conforming to some something we already accept as whatever. Yes, mm. yes, yes, yes. Uh, what we what we want is for it to have a life beyond uh, just the ex expected to be surprising and surprising can be disturbing then yeah please i'd be i'd be happy to share because i joined your group this is liz bearing yeah, I, liz. <laughs> I joined your group very late and just as you were inviting us to do to draw or, or, and so I went really very much with my felt sense and got my oil pastels, which are very messy. Oh, great. And, and I was surprised what came up with a very rhythmic symbol. And then oh. it was transformed from the lemniscape to Madonna and Child. Oh, how interesting. Wow. And I got a whole experience. So thank you. I loved it the ability to be so spontaneous and arriving late and being able to feel safe in your group. Oh, so. fabulous. Great. Can we see it? Oh. Yeah, go ahead, June. No, we want to see her as right. Oh. Oh. Oh, oh wonderful. Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. Oh, that's really yes yeah, so please take a picture of your uh of your art and send it to me and and it will be so interesting to see how they go together or don't go together and something else that came for me lynn is i have different colored paper and the felt sense say you don't need white today yes right so i chose a different background color anyway I will send the picture. Thank you for the experience. 
the the background color is so important both in our lives and in our you know in our art uh it changes when we change the atmosphere in ourselves the background color uh it changes the whole picture of everything huh. yeah so here one of the things that surprised me yeah is, as, oh, I, as I was oh megs as i was drawing the initially said draw like a direction or a movement i felt great interest and as i drew what turned out fingers and thumb grew and i found it very interesting and then you suggested grab a word so i stepped outside the drawing and stopped drawing it and it became a rather bossy the whole <laughs> tenor change from from drawing it and experiencing it to and then looking at it and it just got bossy and overt and squashing me <laughs> oh i felt very squashed by it once i got on the outside of the image oh wow which surprised me that was very surprising to and me. now you have a wonderful image of the bossy part squashing you yeah uh i i I think of the name bossy. Is is could that be a name for the image? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Anybody else? Um, I like the way uh, you said to switch it around. Yes. Um, Turn it upside down. Um, right. Mine was, I'm just feeling the pressure of holiday, you know, moving yeah. forward and what Put I need. Right up to the screen. screen so we could see it. Uh, there. Uh -huh, yeah. um, and then, you know, when I went this way, of course, it went, I, and the need of faith, you know, I, see, I, I'm pretty rational still. Like I have to get more emotive, but you know how you could go backwards or down. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. No, oh. it was, um, and then with no goal, you know, and I try, I'd really like to do something that could give no goal, you know? Mm. Uh, anyway, I love the way you turning it around could yeah. enforce. Yes, yeah. yes, yes. And that very much is a, a focusing step is to turn something around mm -hmm. and to look at it a different way and to see what it says to you that way. Mm hmm yeah okay. so the holidays could be a different experience as well yeah i noticed um how the initial gesture was so freeing mm. and and then when i started looking at it i had all these other um, people pleasing voices and experiences that were coming up about how I was going to relate to that. Mm, and, yeah. and, um, I didn't, um, I mean, it, I ended up coming out. I, I felt myself getting free of something, trying to free myself and went into these other, um, I, I started hearing music versus, mm. um, you know, just because of the initial gesture, it felt like it was a something that was trying to get off the page and become something in a different channel. Mm. Um, but anyway, it was it was a really great exercise. It was very very freeing. But I notice how art making sometimes for me is I'm much more attuned to gesture drawings and you know not not looking at the page. Yeah, look, yes, look, that you know, because every single time I start actually looking at the page, all of a sudden I'm like, as Robert was suggesting, evaluating it. Yes, you know? yes, yes, yes. You introduced two wonderful, uh, wonderful uh, processes of listening to the music of it and drawing without 
looking at the page. Next time we do this, <laughs> we'll do maybe do it next year. Um, we could we could try that. Um, it was I, wonderful how you freed yourself by choosing different modalities. They chose me. Yes. Oh. Yes. Yes. Right. Um, I wanted to say that I totally got into the movement of my hand. It's like my hand, I gave my hand permission <laughs> to have all the choices it wanted without my head. I mean, definitely my head came in, but when I was into my hand, it was, um, it was more almost childlike and playful and joyful. And it's like, I didn't want to stop. I just didn't want to stop. I wanted to keep going. And I, I used your blue and yellow one, which mm -hmm. I kind of labeled crossroads. <laughs> um, crossroads. And yeah, I because I saw this yellow crossing each other, um, two paths, and um, and I put a lot of blue and yellow. I just really responded to those colors and just little bits of green, which are me too, know, right? Nature, nature, nature. nature. <laughs> yeah, right. Yeah. Can you put yours up up to the screen? Wow. Oh, oh my goodness. Wow. A lot of energy and life in that. Wow. Wow. Great. Dorothy, I think we're cousins. <laughs> oh, yeah. Wow. I think it was that initial, I think it was for me it was Lynn's initial movement that was so so big. Yeah, it evoked that. <laughs> Great. Well, I think it's time to go in our breakout rooms and we'll have uh, 15 minutes to share and uh, we'll come back at 930. And um, Lynn, can I ask a question? Sure, sure. Or a comment that I'd like to speak on. Ro, Ro yeah. Hannes talked about all the different associations that she experienced looking at very fast, almost like a slideshow. Yeah, and I think so. One, my question: is, Sometimes in focus, in focusing, you we get a just. What are your thoughts on? Sometimes we're looking at the art, and we're sometimes sitting still a long absorption of something, and sometimes we experience what Ro was talking about. What she experienced, part of that different associations, like red. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Your your thoughts on that? I often wonder how many thoughts can, how many pops, zings. Yeah. That, your well, thought on con concentrating and zings. <laughs> right, right. We're entering a level that uh, that doesn't take turns. You know, all the thoughts come at first, uh, at the same time, and then, and then we have to sort of line them up when we when we write them down uh it's oh. it's almost like uh, when I, when i wake up with dreams and i'm trying to translate them into the linear form and that's such a that's gene's uh zigzag of taking the implicit and translating it into um the explicit and then there are thoughts and things line up rationally or at least in, in rows. And then we go down again to see what it means. Yeah, if you can grasp those all those thoughts, it's wonderful. It's like raining thoughts. And, yeah. <laughs> right. Okay, see you at 9.30. Or nine nine thirty two. So, how was your breakout room sharing? Oh, it's great. She's nodding yeah. her head. 
Let's just hear from you. It was really great. And I think also the share itself is a creative act. Absolutely, yes. And for yes. In, in my breakout, there was uh, one person who said she, she usually doesn't participate in breakouts. <laughs> and I was just struck by her way of telling the story of what's happening. That, mm. that in itself was just so beautiful mm. and so creative and naming, I think naming our experience is also a creative act. Absolutely, yes. Naming is such uh, an important part of a focusing process. I was always struck by in the in uh, the Bible in Genesis that creation came into being by naming <laughs> the different things, and naming can bring everything. Uh, the name is like the handle for all of this. Yeah. I'll say something else. I mean, my my practice was really to to do whatever I need to do not to get stuck with evaluations and judgments. Mm. So I was doing like the, some drawing and even as soon as I thought, oh, I like this, I just erased it. <laughs> oh, that's very interesting. Yeah. And, then, and, then just, uh, and, and just to get to that place where, again, the best way I can say it is where it's interesting, but mm. I don't have any this is great or this is terrible. Yes, yes. So that's been, yeah. So thank you for for the guidance today. Yes, yes. I, um, I, I think the question of how does it feel or what's meaningful here, not... No, I think you could get stuck with what's meaningful here, but how does it how does it feel inside? Is it is a wonderful practice of the focusing attitude? Um, something came up in my group, which I thought was wonderful, um, about putting your art if you want up on the wall whether you're I mean when you feel I mean this is going along with not being critical and judgmental put it up love it you know um give it a space and it's funny I'm in a room where I have all my grandchildren's art up and I love looking at it and I'm gonna put up what I drew today right? oh fabulous <laughs> Yes, oh, yes. Oh. Take a picture and send it to me first and then put it up or, or put it up in the and then send it to me. Can we see it? No. <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, I'll show you. Here's one that was on my notepad um, that I'm going to put up because I can you see this? Yeah, uh, back up a bit. Yeah. I mean, there's, there's one, but today's was up, up, and away. Very simple. <laughs> mm. Mm. Um, <laughs> outside the box. Yay. Yeah. <laughs> Be yeah. outside the box. Right. That's what came up. Um, anyway. Yeah. What, um, I like being outside the box. <laughs> I you know, I want to say, so June, I like what you said about hanging it up. I know I found it, I find it, when I've had to paint a room, it's been quite a while, but I found I'd often not know quite exactly what color. Hmm. So I'd get 20 paint, 10 paint swatches in the neighborhood I knew, <laughs> and I'd hang them up, tape them to the wall. Oh, with the names not showing. Talk about the power of names. Don't tell me it's tangerine because now I want it. But if I turn it upside down and I'm freed from the word tangerine and I can just look at the color, I found after usually two, definitely by th day three, 
the color that was right just seemed to come out of the wall, like 3D, and the other colors receded. Mm. But it took a while. It took two or three days for my for my whole viscera, uh, sensorium, to feel the right color come forth. Mm. Mm. That's why we should have long engagements. Hang them on the wall. Hang her on the wall. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Lynn, may I ask you something? Sure. So, uh... Shashi, um, I joined um, the group a little late today. And I this was your artwork that you displayed, right? Yes. I want, I want to know. Do you have the feeling what you want to paint or the feeling develops as you delve into colors or you have, do you start with an idea or the idea develops as you work? How does that go? Yeah, I usually don't have an idea at all. I, <clears throat> I start with, um, with materials, you mm -hmm. know, so I, I might start just decide I'm going to, to start with, um, oil pastels or something and mm. just the way I sort of led you uh, to just make gestures and and mm. then um and then color and mm. then it develops sort mm. of the same way as as focusing you know where I ask what what's there mm. and mm. I don't, um, do you do you, I, I named each of the paintings that you showed, I named them as you were, sh as you were showing. Oh, oh, I would love and to I, hear this. I wonder, I wonder if other people have the same, it evokes the same feeling in other people. I don't know if they, you know, I don't know, have you ever taken a survey of your, your stuff that if it's, uh, you know, if it evokes a similar feeling in different people? I, I, I think somewhat similar, but but uh, but I think each person's communication is is different. What what do the rest of you think? Hmm. Um, there was something interesting that happened in a breakout room that maybe to me answer a little bit that question. Um, um, I was, you know, the first thing that came to me was break the pattern. And then somebody talked about um, coherence, like looking for coherence, but then realizing that coherence is already here. Mm, yeah, yeah. And that a way of wanting coherence or looking or that intention or kind of can prevent us from seeing the coherence that's already here. At least that's what I got. So I'm still in the unknown with this, but I feel like today what you present in and your work has a way to kind of um, get us into this place where we can be with this edge, right? Yes. I, I feel like you got me there. Uh, I was um, doing for a while, you know, pointed kind of kind of marks. And I, I felt like I needed this because of the way I feel about the world. Ah. Uh. But it felt constraining and it felt like too small and tight and but I needed this and and so today felt like a breaking the pattern and um yeah, getting into something different. Let me show you what happened actually. Now that I'm talking about it, I'm understanding more. So this is breaking the pattern. Oh yeah. Wow. Mm. And this is what came afterwards. I mean, oh. it doesn't have any direct. Oh. Wow. So wow. Beautiful. There is something that that changed, like, drastically. 
drastically. What is the second one called? I don't know yet. Still uh, unknown. Still unknown. What material, what what paint did you work with? What did you work with? The sec the first one is markers, wear markers. Um acrylic markers. Actually, they're very interesting if some of you want to try those. Oh, it's upside down. It's, it's called Posca. Yeah, I just got some. I have uh -huh. And the uh, second one is uh, dry pasta. Dry what? Pasta. Dry pasta. Dry pasta. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. So thank and you, Lynn. Lynn, yeah. what, what paint do you use, Lynn? I use acrylic paint. Uh, and I use a, a lot of different things, but oil pastels, oil sticks, uh, uh, acrylic paint, um, different mediums. Um, I'd love to talk more, but it's time for our four hour poem. And uh, this was taken from, this um, quote was taken from uh, a favorite artist of mine quoted it and, and Dorothy is going to read it. And Christine will put it in the, in the chat and we just want to see how is this like focusing what's being described about art how is it like your writing how is it like movement okay dorothy you okay okay um art is magic so say the surrealists but how is it magic in the metaphysical development or does some final transformation culminate in a magical reality? In truth, the latter is impossible without the former. If creation is not magic, the outcome cannot be magic. To worship the product and ignore its development leads to a dilettantism and reaction. Art cannot result from sophisticated, frivolous, or superficial effects. The significance of a work of art is determined then by the quality of its growth. This involves intangible forces inherent in the process of development. Although these forces are surreal, that is, their nature is something beyond physical reality, they nevertheless depend on a physical carrier. The physical carrier, commonly painting or sculpture, is the medium or the expression of the surreal. Thus, an idea. Thus, the, an idea is communicable only when the surreal is converted into material terms. The artist's technical problem is how to transform the material with which he, she works back into the sphere of the spirit. Mm. Mm. Thank you so much, Dorothy. Thank you. Thank you. And, and that's put in the chat if you want to read it over and think about it. Okay, see you next week. And uh, Katerina and Charles are going to present for us next week. So we'll see you then. Bye-bye.